And today I want to talk about Bitcoin price targets, where I think Bitcoin is going in the coming months and years and how that relates to Plan B stock to flow model. So I've been getting a bunch of questions about how exactly uh, I calculate these price targets and how Plan B does it. So I wanted to break that down for you so you can have the confidence if you're interested in investing in Bitcoin. And again, none of this is invest investment advice. So as we know from that previous video is that in Bitcoin, a new block is created or mined every 10 minutes approximately. And so that's about six new blocks every hour, 144 new blocks every day, or 52,560 new blocks every year. Now, every time a miner wins the race and gets to create a new block, uh, the miner is rewarded with a, uh, a reward or minor subsidy of 6.25 new Bitcoin. So what we're trying to, to calculate here is how many new Bitcoin are produced or mined every year under this new regime of 6.25 Bitcoin, which is what it's it switched to after the May 2020 halving. So we know that there are 52,560 new blocks added to the blockchain every year. And each time a block is added, a miner is rewarded with 6.25 Bitcoin, which in most cases, the miner will then immediately sell the Bitcoin and uh, to pay electric electricity costs and also to pay for uh, their computing uh, costs. So 52,560 new blocks every year times the number of Bitcoin awarded rewarded per block. So that's 328,500 new Bitcoin created every single year. And that's how many are going to be created every single year for the next four years. Then we'll have the May 20, the, uh, the, the 2024 halving, I believe it takes place in May, and the number of Bitcoin new supply will again be cut in half. But for now, it's 328,500 new Bitcoin every year. That's our annual production. If we were a gold mine, that, that would be what we say our, our annual uh, mining production is. It's also known as flow. So stock to flow is just going to be the stock divided by the flow. Now, what is the stock? Well, the stock is the existing inventory. You can think of it as uh, not stock like an equity, or but stocks like how much uh, is, is in storage. And so the existing inv inventory of Bitcoin is about 18 million, 18 million, 421 which I'm getting from Clark Moody's dashboard, which I will uh, I'll link to, but that's listed right here. This is how much, this is the money supply for Bitcoin. It's how many Bitcoin are in existence. And this will never exceed 21 million. There will only be 21 million uh, mined total. So you can see that we're getting fairly, uh, fairly close. We're 90% there or whatever the number is. So we are mining uh, 328,000 500 new Bitcoin every year. The existing inventory is about 18 million. We'll use this full number. So to calculate stock to flow, we just take the stock, this 18 million number, divided by the flow, the annual production. And that gets us this 56 number. Now this is very comparable to where gold is now. And what this means is if you applied it to gold, you would say if the stock to flow of gold was 56, that would mean it would take 56 years of mining at current rates to replace all the existing gold that's above ground. So likewise, this is a number for Bitcoin. It would take 56 years uh, at cur current mining uh, production rates to produce this 18 million uh, Bitcoin. Obviously, we know that uh, the, the flow of new Bitcoin will slow down a lot, but this is how stock to flow is created. It's a measurement of basically how the inventories, how quickly uh, the rate of increase of the inventories every year. And what makes a very hard form of money is something where it's very difficult to create more of it. Even if prices go higher, there's only so much gold that can be mined every year. It's very expensive. It's very dangerous. Uh, it's very environmentally sensitive as well. Uh, so Bitcoin now currently has a stock to flow that's right around uh, where gold is. I'm using, and I'm going to be using uh, this is uh, Plan B's third paper on stock to flow cross asset model. So the question is, Bitcoin doesn't have cash flows like, like a stock or a bond, so you have to find new ways of valuing it and predicting future prices. And so what Plan B used is he, used some, he took some of these methods from valuing gold and silver and the precious metals and sort of imported them into Bitcoin. And if we scroll down, I think it has the, uh, the value of so yes, here the uh, the stock to flow of silver is currently about 33. The stock to flow of gold is about 58. 
And as we've just calculated, the stock to flow of Bitcoin at current mining rates is about 56. So it's really comparable to gold. Now I'm going to be using the formula uh, further down in this paper, which I'll link to, that is used to calculate the market value of something based on its stock to flow. We can see here that he's using 56 as his stock to flow number. This is basically a, um, a regression that he did, a regression analysis. You can see that various assets show up in different places on this uh, chart. Silver is right here, I believe. Gold is right here. And then you have Bitcoin at various previous stock to flows. So just to review, what we did is we calculate the stock to flow of Bitcoin, which is approximately 56. And we're going to use that stock to flow to calculate what the market cap should be if plan B, if plan B's model holds. And again, that's a big if. The model might, might break. I'm betting that it doesn't. It's been a very good predictor so far. I'm betting that it holds at least for the next four years until the next halving. Obviously, anything can happen. Models do break all the time. But if we assume that the model holds, uh, we'll plug in 56 right here. So basically, there are two variables. Uh, the output is the market cap of Bitcoin. The input, you just stick in uh, the uh, stock to flow of whatever it is you're trying to calculate. And again, I'm using this formula right here. And so what this does, this X, by the way, is e to the 12.7598. And this uh, this little up caro, uh, or whatever it's called, is uh, 56 to the power of 4.1167 if you want to calculate it yourself. But either way, if you do this do this calculation, you'll end up with a market cap, a projected market cap for Bitcoin of 5.47 trillion. So that's the market cap. That's where Bitcoin should trade over the next four years. But that doesn't tell us the value per Bitcoin. Now to get the value per Bitcoin, we just take that market cap and we divide it by the number of Bitcoin. So I'll use the number of Bitcoin that are currently in existence, this 18. Uh, 4, 4 million number that gives us a target uh, a Bitcoin price target of two hundred ninety six thousand five hundred and forty one dollars per Bitcoin this is why it is a very exciting investment potential investment current price is ten thousand nine hundred and forty eight now there could be some objections to this for example you could say well they're eventually going to be 21 million Bitcoin let's let's come up with a more conservative number uh, they're obviously going to be more than 18.4 million at the end of four years. So maybe we should use a higher number. So I'll use an extreme number. I'll just say, let's use 21 million. And so if we do that, if we just take 5.47 trillion market cap divided by the full number of coins that there'll be uh, Bitcoin. Uh, so 5.47 trillion divided by 21 million, you still come up with $260,000 per Bitcoin. Now, uh, there's a lot of debate about how many Bitcoin have been lost. And I'm going to use this recent estimate, uh, three to four million Bitcoin have been lost. I, I don't think it's anywhere near this number, but it, it's, it's quite possible, which means that actually the existing Bitcoin uh, become more rare. So if, for example, Picasso painted a thousand mature paintings and we learned that, uh, and we learned that uh, 10 to 15 percent of them were lost, uh, all of a sudden those remaining ones become much more valuable. I think that's the case with Bitcoin. But what I'm going to do is actually going to lower the value uh, of Bitcoin. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but let's just assume that 4 million Bitcoin have been lost. So I'll take the upper end of this estimate. I think it's nowhere near that number, but obviously I, I have really no idea. And so all we need to do is then change the stock number. So instead of there being 18.4 uh, million Bitcoin, there are uh, 14 million. We divide the flow doesn't change. We're still producing 328,500 new Bitcoin every year. That gives us a stock to flow of 43.97, still uh, higher than silver, for example, and that gives us a market cap of 2.2 trillion if we use that as the stock to flow number. 2.2 trillion, 2.02 trillion, excuse me, divide, divide by the full number of coins, 21 million coins still gives you 96,000, so almost a 10x, uh, 9x from where we are right now uh, at 10 or 11,000 uh, per Bitcoin. If we use the smaller number, if we assume that they're, uh, if we use the same number that we use for the stock, the 14.4 million, we take the market cap, divide by that number, um, we still come up with a, uh, we come up with a slightly higher number, $139,825 per Bitcoin. So you can see that either way, if this model holds, if this is a correct, uh, a correct uh, approximation of how to value Bitcoin, and it makes sense to me that things should be valued 
based on their relative scarcity, where scarcity is measured by stock to flow. Uh, obviously, there'll be people who will say, well, I, I have, uh, you know, my kid created some uh, finger paint art and there's only two of his paintings in the world. Well, the re obvious response to that is there's not a whole network built around your kid's paintings. There's not, you can't beam your, your kid's paintings to China. Uh, you cannot, there's not billions of dollars of equipment uh, mining your child's paintings, etc. You don't have the same sort of network effects. So the, the key is to have something that has network effects, has a lot of people using it, and people go there because a lot of people are using it, combined with scarcity. And the amazing thing about Bitcoin is it has all of these properties. It's got the very high stock to flow, and you can only imagine what's going to happen when the stock to flow doubles in uh in uh, four years from now, you can run the numbers yourself. You can use um, 112 here. There's never been uh, an object, digital or otherwise, that had a stock to flow that high. As far as I know, gold has the highest stock to flow of any sort of uh, monetary monetary good. And this is one reason that Bitcoin has begun to function as a store of value and as a monetary good because of this very high stock to flow. So either way, I think the lowest estimate we came up with was uh, 96,000 here for Bitcoin. Again, that will go up quite a bit as the uh, stock to flow moves up again in four years from now. But even if it doesn't, even if Bitcoin goes to 96,000 and that's where it stops, still an amazing investment from here. So I will link to uh, this dashboard and I will link to Plan B's uh, cross asset model paper as well. So you can sort of dig into this. And uh, the reason to dig into this is to give you confidence. If you choose to invest in Bitcoin, again, none of this is investment advice, when the, when the price moves around, when someone comes by and says you should be invested in this or that, or that Bitcoin's a fraud, or that uh, et cetera, et cetera, this will give you, uh, having worked through this intellectually and really thought about it and done the numbers yourself, it'll give you the confidence to become a long-term Bitcoin holder like I am. There's a good chance that I'll actually never sell my Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin's a store of value, it can theoretically hold all the value that's contained in human civilization and as new values created it can be put into bitcoin a lot of people don't realize this that stocks can only go up so much but forms of money that are stores of value can really go up infinitely much because there's there's infinite value that can be created in the universe